Welcome to the Knox Soccer Podcast, where we tell the soccer stories of our favorite big town, little city, Knoxville, Tennessee, and around the world. I'm Patrick Teasdale. And I'm Brian Canever. Today's episode is a doozy. We put our names down on the wait list at the end of last season for our returning guest. We have Angelo Kelly on the pod, an alumnus of the Knox Soccer Podcast. But before we get to Angelo, Brian, how are you feeling after an electric start to, to the season three dubs in the regular season play you can't even be mad about the open cup elimination because we saw five goals in that match uh but yeah it's been uh it's been what we've hoped for what we asked for after a disappointing into last season that we would come out hot out of the gates lots of new additions uh, including a man who was supposed to be a guest on the pod this very evening, but didn't didn't show. Unfortunately, we're not going to say who it was. Uh, we'll just say he's European, and you all know how I feel about European footballers. Um, but we've had several new additions to the roster, and um, I mean the team has started off on fire. Big win away to start the season, then two big wins at home. I was there for both those games with my kids. Uh, unfortunately, Patty, for the home opener against Lexington, you know, it was freezing cold, just like last year. So and, cold. And then in like the 70, 70th minute, my daughter, she's like snot blow, you know, coming out of her nose. And I'm like, okay, let's, let's just go. Let's just go. And then we're walking to the car. First goal, right? Get in the car on our way home. Second goal, miss both of them. Fortunately, we were there for our, our guest this, this evening for Angelo Kelly's bombazo, his rocket against the Tormenta in, in the next league match in the 1-0 no win. We're going to ask him about that in a little bit. But um, you missed Asheville City. You and I were there for the Asheville City game three years ago in USL 2. Yep. We, we drove with the boot. That was an incredible experience. We didn't get to get to attend this time. Um, but, yeah, it's been a great start. to the, It's been an electric start to the season. Well, let's get into it. Who is our magnificent guest? And uh, let's just let's get to it. Yeah, so we we've got Angelo Kelly, not Rosales, even though they keep saying that on the broadcast. Angelo, you got to you need to call somebody and tell them to say your last name right. What's going on, man? Uh, I, I don't know. Sometimes when you're when you're like a Hispanic or Latino, you know, they get to use both of your last names. But at this point, I need to do it. Send somebody out. It's just use Kelly. It's too much of a long pronunciation. <laughs> yeah, you got. I think they want to practice rolling the R, so they're just like Angel okay, Ro, Rosales. You know, they're like, I, yeah. I, I took Spanish four years in high school. I just want to roll my R, but they can't. They can't do it. So, uh, Angelo, we're so excited to have you here. So, the next game for One Knox is this upcoming Friday, Union Omaha, six thirty p.m., and I believe it's the world record foam finger night attempt. Every fan in attendance is going to get a foam finger. They have to wave them simultaneously <coughs> to break the – I think this is going in the Guinness Book of World Records. Angelo, in all of your years of being alive on this earth and of playing soccer, have you ever seen potentially 3,000 foam fingers in one place before? No, not at all. But that would be amazing if I get to be part of that. <laughs> so. That would be awesome. Growing up as a little boy in Honduras, did you ever imagine one day I'm going to play before a crowd of people just waving foam fingers? Or what, <laughs> would you have believed it if somebody had told you? Nah, I probably would just tell you. It's like, what are you guys talking about? I just, nah. But now, nah, since I get, you know, we're, we're close to it. And, you know, that would be awesome if I am just get to be a part of it, you know. That's awesome. Okay, Angelo. So we're going to get straight into our questions. We are not going to delay our eager listeners. You are one of the returning capitanos uh, this season. Last season didn't end the way that everybody expected it to, that everybody wanted it to. The team didn't make the playoffs, struggled to score goals, had a very strong defense, which you contributed to. I think you played just about every position on the field last year, except for goalie. <laughs> and if you weren't getting red cards, you were scoring goals. So... What we we would love to know. What was the feeling like in the team <clears throat> after last season? What was the feeling like after last season, and how did you guys reset and then approach this this new season? I I, I think from uh, from everything, just I think we could from how we reset. It was just like we used 
last year as a as a nice guideline for us to improve and you know what do we done good the good meaning like how can we improve in the certain aspect you know keeping the ball better you know finishing finishing our chances in the final third so we have done uh quite well but we still got to improve on little things and you know once again we used that guideline from last year of the things that we didn't do well once again how we turned those bads into goods and goods and to improve them into a much better and i think we've done that especially with the guys coming in so what was the feeling like around the team like what were the, some of those goals that you didn't didn't meet especially you as one of the three captains along with jordan skelton and elia illich who's now on the coaching staff you know what was what was uh, the feeling like you know for you guys as as leaders of the team about where there were missed I, opportunities i think i think that uh, i think the feeling is just uh i think it's frustration and a little bit in and in, in a lots of disappointment just because you know once again we had the best uh record in the league for defending but at the same time we we had it on the opposite side of not scoring so like you know we worked so well you know behind by not going forward so i think it was just a lot of frustration and you know a lot of disappointment because once again at the end of the day you want to get rewarded and once again you win football games by scoring <laughs> so sometimes your best you know defense can be your best so it's the best offense so all right so a lot of personnel changes leading into this season we saw new players come in from from the start siver haugli from norway has come in former des moines menace defender played with with Coach McKeever in the past, he's he. We expected him to be in the back. He's been playing that number. We call it number five in South America. They call it number six in Europe. That central defensive midfield role. Stuart Ritchie came in playing wide back. Innocent and Shooties come in fo- at, at forward. Kempis. People say Kempis Tequila. I want to say Kempis Tequila. I'm fascinated by the fact that his first name is Ma- is Kempis, like Mario Kempis, the Argentinian striker. Um, so there's been a lot of new players that have come in, made an impact. For for you, you've been you were there last year. You're here this year. What is the process of building chemistry between everybody and incorporating the, those new players been like? I think it's been it's been awesome, and the way we have built chemistry this uh, this this season is by once again, you know, taking that blueprint and a guideline from last year to whatever that little chemistry that we have with the returners this year, and then you know us improving us players and you know how can we get everybody else to buy buy into the to the process to the system of what we have and you know so far i think we've done a very good job you know bringing those guys in the new guys and obviously you know having individual conversations group conversations about you know the expectations and everything and you know once you get everybody on board you know that's just you know then you get end product at the end you know but like once again we still got little things to work on little by little can you give us any insights into what that process looks like? Like you get all these new guys that show up, they show up to the first practice and then you guys, different languages, right? Kempis from Germany, Sivi, he's played in the U S but he's from Norway, innocent from Rwanda. Like what is that like for the team day to day? It's hard to share, but it's kind of, you have to be there in order for us, you know, how we are just very together with each other. You know, we get to just hang around the, the locker room, hang around the, you know, the just the football pitch you know we get to have like small conversations you know to a group conversation we get to hang out a lot after after training and you know stay during training to do extra stuff and those little things just kind of build up towards you know the chemistry itself you know get to know each other personally as well you know that there's the football side but also the human part you know get to know you know hey where you from how you you know How's life over there? What's different? Do you like America? You know, especially for those new guys that come from Europe itself, you know, it's very different. So, you know, at the same time, when you kind of open your arms to somebody that's coming new, they feel like more into opening up to you. And that's how you little by little, you get to build that connection. And then it kind of slowly translate because you get that trust, you know, that feeling that, hey, you know, he has, he has my back. I have your back. And that's how we able to translate that little chemistry back and forth. So. So, so I, a lot of you aren't aren't from Knoxville. Besides the academy players, there's no Knoxville natives in the team. So, what do you guys do for team bonding or for for hanging out? Like, our, I, I, we're both old guys here. We're both in our in our thirties. A veteran. Sorry, sorry. You're a veteran. You've been around the game. You know, I remember like watching videos of the pros when I was younger and it's like everybody played FIFA, you know, everybody was like on their yeah, PS2, yeah, yeah. old videos of like Messi and all the, his teammates yeah. playing FIFA. So what do you guys do to, to bond and, and hang out? 
the guy, a lot of the guys for the most part, you know, if they're if they're not coaching in the academy or like myself and other guys, you know, I think they're mostly going out for coffee, going on a walks together, you know, once they or they go to the coffee shop and play cards with Jalen. Jalen's a big man on that, playing twenty two. So a lot of guys just go there, play cards, or sometimes they just go but to go downtown and go on a walk. Just walk around and get to explore downtown little by little, you know. Okay. Do you have a, have you found your own favorite little place in Knoxville yet? Favorite place to eat, favorite place to, there's some there's some Honduran spots. They're kinda hidden, you know, around town, but Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're 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 like, you know, I'm looking for a hole in the wall kind of spot, but so far I haven't found one yet in downtown. Maybe I need to drive a little bit, you know, more out outside in there. But, you know, we've been very busy. We know it started with preseason and all that stuff and you know, it's kinda hard to sometimes to get around when you get little time and obviously, you know, I'm a veteran, so so, so I have to, you know, take care of yeah. the family and stuff. So time is very, very on the essence. Take care of the family. Take care of the muscles. You got to be there, you know, like yeah. mas- massaging the muscles. That's a, you know, I, I told my, I broke my foot playing rec league soccer in one of the one Knoxville uh-huh. leagues a, a couple of years ago. And I was talking to my dad. I was like, dad, you know, I'm a, I'm a veteran. I'm 30. I was 32 at the time. And I was like, that's when about these two that retired, you know, that's when everybody's getting out of the game. He's like, you're not a soccer player. You're a grown man. Stop playing yeah. soccer like this. Yeah. And I was like, Dad, you don't understand. Okay, l- let's get back on track. We've grown kind of used to, for those of us who who watched last year and in that USL2 season, the way that Coach McKeever likes to set up his teams with the three big guys at the back, the the wing backs, the two holding midfielders, two attacking midfielders, and the, and the center forward. We've seen new personnel come in. Sometimes the team has looked different expected to see you in that holding midfield role and have seen you playing higher up the field this season and it's it's paid off because you had that bombazo against the tormenta uh have there been shifts in the system or the tactics or even just like the 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 approach to how you guys go into the 90 minutes this season from from last i think compared to last season this year i don't think has been anything you know different in a change of system i think we just we, we, I think I would say we have improved the system. We have learned it, you know, for the most of us, we learned it and we still teach, teaching it and to the newer guys, how to do it, where to be, you know, how to, you know, press, how to do that. We're still getting like, once again, it's a work in process, but I think we have improved the system in, in a ways to where we're able to switch it up however we want, you know, and don't want to share too much into details, but at the same time, you know, once you not not to make it too long we go back to last year as a blueprint you know use that once again to improve it improve it improve it and so far it has worked so i was still got plenty of work to do to make it even better okay so tactically little shifts it just happens to be that the it's clicking more this year than it was last year yeah and it's also it also you know because at the same time we have the personnel that you know lights it up more gives them more energy in certain positions you get more quality in a certain position that you you, uh, you were not getting from it last year. So, and then once again, there's a lot of good guys that came in and they're, they're ready to compete and they got the quality for it. So, you know, the level has raised up. So, because at the same time, if the guy, if the first guy can't do it, the second guy will do it even better. So, you know what I mean? So it's competition. So people have to step up. Yeah, I think that's what I've I've realized just looking at the players that have gone out on the field these first four or five games is that, there is now so much competition for a place where last year, you know, Yesin was a guaranteed starter. This year, Yesin hasn't really started. Charlie Matchell came over from Lexington, captain there. He's gotten some some game time, but um, not necessarily a starter. Then, you know, some of the familiar faces that we have from last year who, who returned to, I was actually kind of surprised that Rodolfo and, and Gio came back also alums of our Latino episode yeah. last last year. I was excited. I was glad to see them back. Um, so it's been interesting for us as, as fans and viewers to see how everybody's mixed in. And I think it was especially exciting in the cup match to see some of the newer players like Kempes get some time, get his goals in. And now I, I think that's why we're kind of bummed because now that you don't get that experiment anymore in the cup, the league yeah. is different. Though we, we do get to see some internal cup games coming up soon so that should be a another fun thing to look forward to as fans um speaking of fans how how have things been between the players and 
our fan base, which was so excited to see the return of the league, the scruffs, you know, we had the, the chairman of the scruffs, Tim, he was on the podcast last episode. Uh, there's been a new entrance into the stadium for the players before you guys walked out through the tunnel. Yeah. Now you, you walk out among the fans. Um, you've now been here for over a year. Uh, you've been embraced by the community here. So what's what's it been like seeing the fans again, uh, being back in the stadium and watching, you know, everybody cheering you on, celebrating, ha- seeing fans around town probably. What's what's your relationship with the fans been like this year? I think it's been I think it was awesome. You know, we grew we grew uh, together, you know, and stuff, you know, compared to last year. And I think, you know, our relationship has grown bigger, you know, as you stay in a club for, year, you know, the, the years and years come afterwards. So you you can to have a you know a closer relationship with the fans and you know it's a small town as well so but at the same time they got a big heart with everybody so i think it's been a good relationship and once again we get to build it more and more and more and and we're excited to get back to in the field and then we have done it and we've given the fans what you know they were wanting last year a glimpse of it but you know once again we still got lots of work to do yeah very early on um so we saw you uh, score that goal from distance i was actually so unfortunate man that i was watching my kids my kids were like res- <laughs> wrestling they were wrestling we were on the on the little mound on the hill watching so we were like right there when you know uh like i think it was jordan like ran into the <laughs> science and stuff like that fell over I, I, it was exciting and then i turn around for a second because i think my son is like eating the grass or something and then it's like Whoa! And then I see you running off with like that silent celebration with your finger yeah. over your lips. You know, I was able to watch the goal afterwards. It was a stunner from distance, you know, rocket goal. What's the deal with the celebration? I, I, I want to know. So, uh, honestly, long story short, we had like uh, the day before the game, we had kind of like a, I don't know, like a play, like a play that ended up in my feet, in my feet, because whatever. We sent a long ball, obviously, to CV. And then CV laid it off to me. Obviously, this is just like no defending, no nothing, right? Open net. And, you know, I, I come to support to CV on the on the play, right? And I try to hit it with my left foot and practice. And I just went poof, over over the woods, basically, into the street. And everybody's like, nah, you're not hitting this. You're not hitting this. So, I mean, and then obviously in the game, I just got, I got it. I turn and I just hit it. I connected very well with it, you know, as hard as I could. And then I kind of just, that, that just motion popped in my head memory. I was like, you know what? Just like, shh, I can hit it with my left foot. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's, that's how that celebration came on. So it's just like, all right. So it was more like silencing your own teammates than silencing yeah, 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 the fans yeah, yeah, or any criticism. It's like, yeah, you're, all, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're all haters. You're all haters. This is for the bench. This is for everybody who yeah, doubted me yeah, yeah, on my own on, team. Honest, honestly, because I, I, I could hear, you know, when I had the ball and I turned it, it was like, obviously a lot of people were like, oh, pass it. Or, you know, Frank Ross was on a run and a great run. And the next one, Rich, 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 uh, Stuart Richie on the other side asking for the ball. But everybody was just asking for it. But I was like, nah, let me hit that. <laughs> All right, Angelo. Um, I got to ask. Let's talk about this hair. Last season was the long flowing locks with frosted yeah. tips. I'm thinking it, it, it it's like an early Man U Beckham. Now this season uh, you're like fully buzz cut, like a, a late man you uh Beckham, maybe uh Real Madrid. So are you in your revenge era? From your answer and your goal celebration, it sounds like it and, and we love it. Yeah, no, honestly, it's I mean, I don't know if you can say phases or anything, but like the short buzz haircut was an accident. I was meant to have it like long platinum, but it kind of backfired a little bit. So I kind of just decided to go for a buzz haircut and go white. So that's that's the story behind it, but I, I can use your I can use that as revenge. So you know, got something to prove this year. <laughs> yep, let's so, go, let's go. Yeah. How, how often do you have to color it? I just dyed it like about a month and a half ago, so now it's starting to grow back. So a little bit of black. So I might have to retouch it sometime this week just to get the black off of it. If not, I just let it grow and it just grows into that frosting tips. So I don't know, maybe. Maybe yeah. just keep it long again. Who knows? Yeah, I tried to do the frosted tips when I was in in uh, what was that seventh or eighth grade? It was like the Dawson's Creek era here in the U.S. And I asked my mom to do it, and my mom's like a cheap Hispanic woman, so she went to CVS and got like the cheap one. <laughs> she did it herself in the kitchen, like just put a towel on me, did it yeah. herself. 
And I was a, I was a little bit of a chubby kid back back then, and so uh, some of the kids used to call me Hamburger. That was the nickname oh. that they made for me. And I show I showed up with this frosted tips, and people were like Cheeseburger. I remember running by the soccer field where I used to. Oh no! Yeah, oh, dude. No. <laughs> yeah, dude. I remember. I remember running by the soccer field where I used to play with like all the kids, and they were like, "Cheeseburger, what's up, cheeseburger?" And I was like, "Man, I'm never doing that again." And now I'm losing. Yeah. Money, so, you know. Hey, you can never, never know. You can always rock it back. You know, just now you can get it done properly. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. It's back on track. Back on track. So still early in the season, uh, Angelo. Uh, but if you've had to choose some some favorite moments from behind the scenes, some stuff that fans haven't been able to see, you know, haven't been able to experience, like give give us a little bit of a look. What have been some of your favorite moments so far? Uh, so it's from my, um, so far, I think it's just the group itself. You know, when we get to, I don't know, just kind of be together and and a warm up till we have a different style of warm up this year, to where like we do, we have a circle right to where like we put like twenty two mats and we just circle, kind of do like a yo yoga into mobility to where that's pretty cool you know i mean to where we all together just facing each other in a small circle while doing some exercises you know and then afterwards we just kind of walk into the pitch get into the to the you know activation of touching the ball and getting our tactics or gameplay on and stuff there so i think that's fairly like a cool 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 change of scenery and it you know and it helps with to interact where like you're not on your phone you're not doing anything you have a teammate beside you or, you know, stretching with you so you can, so you're able to have a conversation and stuff. So I, I think that's, 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 uh, that's the best part for me. All right, cool. Well, man, we've made it through these questions fairly quickly. A man, a few, fewer words, uh, Angelo, uh, I got to ask, uh, I look at you guys out there. I was actually, I went on the roster yesterday on ESPN and I was just like, I was, uh, sorting it based on height just because there are some really big dudes on the team, you know, yeah. it's like you've got uh, S- Civi at six five, Jordan and Jalen at six four. You got a couple of six twos, you know, and then there's some. I think Kingsford is at the bottom of the table five five. <laughs> and you're you like, don't, right. tell don't tell him that. <laughs> yeah, and I think I like I, I saw you and James. He listed at five eight, and I'm like five eight, and I was like, I don't know, I don't know. I think you guys might be on your tippy toes getting that five eight. I don't know. Uh, yeah, we'll but, see. But all different styles, right? It doesn't mean it, it, it does. Size doesn't count for everything. So if there were a a one Knoxville Fight Club, or let's say a one Knoxville Wrestling Club, because you don't want to ruin the pretty faces, you don't want to get blood on the frosted yeah. tips. Who wins in a wrestling match? If there is an all out battle, I want to know based on the personalities, based on the bonding. You know who who should we put our money on if 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 the apocalypse comes and the one Knox players have to have it out against each other. I would say Frank Ross. Frank Ross is a sneaky one. You really? Would not, you would not. You, you would not think, but he's a sneaky yeah, guy. Yeah. Whoa. Was not expecting that one. Is he? What is, yeah. is he? Is he going to get like a glass bottle and smash it across your head, or is he going to you know bite your ear off? What's he? What's he? What's Frank's like? <laughs> just just letting you know, he has that Scottish blood in him, so so he, okay. he 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 has a little bit of you know little bite on him. That's what I would say. Okay, so Frank Ross. Number one, who who else? Like, like I, I think James is pretty scrappy because I've seen him on the field talking some smack, you know, and I think he can get get pretty intense. Um, I'm I'm excluding you because <laughs> I, I we we've, we've seen you at times. I think last year, I can't remember if it was you or if it was Gio who got the red card. No, it was. I think you each got a red card for kicking somebody in the face. No, nah, no, that's not me. That's you. Gio had the kick in the face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, the, the, I, I, my red card was like the goalkeeper jumping over me, and he just landed. Ah, uh, yes, J- yes, yes. And then he did yes. the backflip and almost decapitated yeah. himself. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I remember this. Uh, what? Who else? Who else is like this scrappy? I would say. I would. Scrappy? I would say also Jordan Skelton. He's a little bit, you know. Really? Yeah, okay. yeah he has another little I can bit of see a strong that. bite. I, I, yeah, exactly. Skelts just getting in there and bossing them yeah, around. Yeah, yeah. He, he, I think he's your type of guy that will go ahead butt somebody for sure, a hundred percent. See, and then I th- like, I think there's a couple of nice. Who are the nice guys? You know, because I'm like Danny Fernandez. You know, he's we call him the Spanish Bull, but he's he seems like a pretty nice guy. Sean O'Hearn, 
he seems like a pretty laid back, chill guy. Innocent. I mean, he's got innocence in his name. Yeah, this guy's not going yeah, after anybody. But, you know, hey, as they say, the quiet ones are the worst ones. So you can't even trust a nice face. So I'll tell you that for a fact. That's why I picked Frank Gross. All right, Angelo, I, I don't have any more questions for you. Patty, do you have any questions for Angelo? Angelo, I've seen um, your baby boy at uh, practically all of the matches last year. Um, I'm the new father. I have a three month old James. Um, oh, awesome. so Congrats. What's, what's the what's the trick? What's the um, what's the secret sauce of uh, having your kid at the match and not melting? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Just I, I think I think Milo has just grown into the guys who are like, I know they, I think there's no secret. I think at that point, everybody in there is just like a like a figure, a father figure to him because he just goes to anybody in there. So I think that he's well taken care of. So I don't think I can share, I can share much of a secret. That's so it's, cool. That's, that, that's awesome to hear that my look is, is around the guys and uh, sees them all. Yeah. Um, no, no, no. For, for that's me, great. Yeah. Yeah. For my biggest thing is, I mean, as you know, as you, I could sense I, we're not from here. So my, Milo gets to grow up with them, you know, so they, you know, Milo gets to see them every day. And my biggest thing for me, it was, you know, when I first had him, it's like, how can I have him around me all the time? And all the guys, you know, that way he's able to just always be around me, be around other guys. And he enjoys it. He loves it, you know. And then as you probably seen him last year, he would love to get on the pitch. Now he he's able to walk, run. So now he's able to, I bring him like two hours before the game, you know, in the, and then just get him out there in the field. And he gets just to kick the ball around, get to be around the guys, you know. So I, I would, I know that's just a cool experience for me as a father because, you know, I always want to look back and be like, you know, hey, he, he hang out with me during my playing times. And then hopefully he able to remember a little bit by pictures or videos of seeing him. Oh, I used to hang out with my dad in the locker room with the guys and everything. So hopefully, you know, I can, I can you know, I'll, I'll share those, I'm cherishing those moments now. And then hopefully he, he appreciates them later. <laughs> so yeah, that's awesome. That's so cool. He will definitely, definitely. Yeah. Uh, well, Angel, thanks so much for joining us on the Knox Talker podcast. We greatly enjoy it. Uh, and hey, you're welcome back anytime. No, thank you guys. I appreciate it for you guys hiring me. And you know, next time we could always have it in Spanish or something. You never know. Next time, I think what we what we need to do is. Uh, you know, one of my best friend, he actually just left Knoxville. One of my best friends in, in Knoxville is from Honduras. He moved to Dallas. But we used to always get Honduran food together. And there was a great spot uh, kind of close to downtown. It's closed since. Uh, Sabor Catracho was really good. We go to La Limpira. And I actually, uh, my, my wife is very American, doesn't like international food, doesn't like weird food. She'll eat Mexican food because she likes queso. But, you, you, need to, you, you need to throw a little bit of salt in her food at least. Add some dude, flavor no, or something. Nope, she won't, she won't do it, man. She won't do it. So, uh, But every year for my birthday, I get to pick an exotic restaurant. I get to exotic, you know, with quotations, uh, restaurant to take her to. And we went to La Limpira, which is a Honduran restaurant. It, I think yeah. it, says, it says Mexican, but it's owned by Hondurans, and they have a Honduran menu. It's in West Knoxville, and that was amazing. So, yeah, like, what 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 do you have there? Do you have like a uh, shuka con chick? chicharron? No, man, I gotta uh, get yuca, that. Yuca. I love that chicharron, man. Yeah, so yuca with chicharron, and then uh, oh, what do you call the Honduran tacos? Uh, doradas, uh, or they're like the Honduran version of tacos. Uh, taquillos. They're like taquillos. I, I and then I like, of course. In case none of my friends from back home in Bayo, New Jersey, are listening to this, but I was a big fan of of Salvadoran pupusas. Now Ooh. my Honduran friends have told me that Honduran pupusas are better. My Guatemalan friends have told me that Guatemalan pupusas are better. But I, I mean, I'll eat any pupusas, but I like the Salvadoran ones. So, but I, I have had pupusas there as well. I, I think I think that's just a matter of of a, pre, of a preference. You know, what I mean, I think. Some of them will tell you this better. Some of them, they'll tell you theirs is better. But I think you, you, I think for the best choices, like you gotta have them all three at your at your table. Then you can decide. All from three. Salvador, mm. from Salvador, Honduras, and Guatemala, and then you're like, all right, let me be, let me be the, let me be the one that decides here for you guys. Okay, that that's what we're doing next, Patty. All three yep. international pupusas, same time. We're gonna do it in person. We're gonna get the club to pay for it. <laughs> yeah. you know, hey, you uh, never know. You never know. We'll yeah. we'll invoice Drew. Yeah. Okay. So everybody, 
Angela, thank you for joining us. It, remember, Friday night, big night, world record foam finger night. There's going to be so many foam fingers. Do it at least for the look on all of our international players' faces when they're like, what is soccer in America? Like, what is what is going on here? Because I'm sure this has never been done in Norway or in Germany or in Ghana or in any of the other nations mm-hmm. represented. Yeah. Uh, this is a beautifully American, beautiful Knoxvillean thing. So make sure you come out, you get your foam finger. Every single fan, Pat, Patty, every fan gets one. I think you could probably double or triple up, man. The kids can get yeah, some foam fingers. You know, it's going to be awesome. Maybe one for each hand if they've got extras. I, yep. I expect to see Milo walking around with his yeah, foam finger. Even your baby can have, even Milo can have one and yep. the other baby mm-hmm. as well. So it's true. And one Knox is even going to sweeten the deal. One of those foam figures is going to have a Zach Bryan country music ticket. And honestly, I'm more Ooh. of a Garth Brooks guy, kind of classic country. But then my wife Hillary turned me on to "I Remember Everything" by Casey Musgraves and Zach Bryan. And woo man, that, that oh. is a song. I want those tickets so bad now. So I'm going to get as many foam fingers as I can. Fingers crossed. Uh, I get those hey, tickets. Hey, so. you better take your kid too. Tell him he got two hands too. Yeah, that's so true. That's in- yeah. In- 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 <laughs> increase your chances. <laughs> Next game, Friday, you in Omaha, 6.30 p.m. At halftime, world record foam finger night. Waving all at once, trying to say a world record. Um, but the record I'm looking forward to is bringing in another dub and getting top of the league. So go one Knox. Let's do it. Go and Knox. We'll see you guys on Friday. We'll be back with a new episode very soon. Hasta luego.